family. There are seasons in your life where you have to learn how to hear the God of the God voice in a dark place. You have to teach yourself how to sing songs in a dark place. You, you got to teach yourself how to pray in a dark place. You, you, have to, you have to teach yourself even when you don't feel it. So when we come in here and we, we say that he's Adonai and he's great Jehovah Jireh, that you may not feel that in this moment, but you got to you gotta teach yourself how to, how to sing. And this, this song that you're singing is coming from, come on somebody, a dark place. Yeah, 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 this, this praise, come on somebody, this come from a, a dark place. That this, this, this what God has been speaking to me all this week, that this, this passion inside of you, that's brewing inside of you. It's, 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 it's stirring inside of you. It's, it's coming from a deep down dark place inside of you where, where God begins to take the broken pieces and God begins to take the broken stories and God begins to take the crown that you feel has been knocked over your head and God begins to turn it and stir it. And all I'm sharing with you today is that something is brewing inside of you and it's called passion. It's called passion. There's a, there's a fire inside of you today and I'm just telling you, you got to release what God has put inside of you today. He's Yahweh. He's great Jehovah Jireh. Oh, come on, he's the way maker. Come on. Come on, you, I already said you got to, when you don't feel it, you got to keep practicing it. When you don't feel like singing, you got to keep singing. When you don't feel like praying, you got to keep praying. When your back is up against the wall and you feel like this may be the last blow, but you got to keep showing up. And I'm, I'm just telling you, this is a Galatians. This is a Galatians fire when it says, don't grow weary, don't give up, don't quit. You got to keep pushing and say, God, you are Jehovah Jireh. There's a fire in here. There's a fire in here. Just remain standing. I, I want to read Revelations chapter 2, verse 1 through 5 to you. It'll give context to this beautiful moment that we're having in God's presence. There's nothing like his presence, family. There's peace in his presence. There's joy in his presence. Whatever you came in here today, understand it's right here in the room with you. For our online family, it's God will meet you right where you're at, that when you're in his presence, everything that you need is found in his presence. That there's nothing greater than the presence of your heavenly father. And when his presence sits on you and his presence settle on you when depression tries to overtake your, your mind set. And I'm telling you, when the presence of God rests, everything that you need is found right there. Revelations chapter 2 verse 1 says to the angels of the church in Ephesus, it writes, the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands, I know, somebody say, I know. I know your works. I know your toil and your patience, endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil but have tested those who called themselves apostles and are not found and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently. I know, I know, I know, I know. Here's what God was whispering to me and he told me to tell you this family. God is saying, I know. I know you're struggling. I know you're toiling. I, I, I know you're struggling with being a single mom. 
I know you're struggling on, on, on the job and you're trying to figure out the fight. I, I know what you're going through. I, I know you're trying to balance it all and, and you're saying if one more obstacle and one more task gets hand into my, into my arms and what I'm going to do is this going to be the last blow. God is saying, I know, I know, no, I know. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my namesake. And you have not grown weary. But verse 4 says, but I have this against you. Have this against you. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to challenge us today, family. That even though he sees your good works, he also sees your heart. And he says, but I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. That there's something working against you. Come on. That there's a win that's been at you. There's something that's working against you and it's, it's fighting you and it's testing you. And, and you don't know if you can get through this win. You might have got through that win back then five, ten years ago. But, but this blowing and this strength and, and this test, you don't, you don't know there's something working against you. You ever been in a season with God where you feel as though that this win that's coming against you can't get through? That this blow right here that you feel as though that I, I don't know if I can make it through this one, God. I don't know if I have the strength to make it through this one, God. And he's saying that there's a turn in your, in your spirit today. That, that, that he's turning and he says in verse 5, it says, remember, somebody say remember. Remember therefore where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. Can I take you back to the time when you first fell in love with God? Can, can I take you back to that moment where that fire burned all night? stayed in his word or pray as soon as you wake up in the morning when the spirit called you to fast you had no problem you 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 were practicing something and, and here's what God is saying that your your attention shifted and now you have some winds against you and the only way to get through this you got to shift back to him you got to shift back to your first love. You got to, you got to shift back to the, the things that you do, would get. I love that when Jesus spoke this, he said you got to put it into practice. It's time to go back to practice. It's time to go back to the things that you used to do when you fell in love with them. It's time to go back to that you used to open up your word and you used to read. It's time that you would sit in his presence and you wouldn't move till he speaks. I'm telling you, God is saying, I want you to come back to your first love because there's something else sitting in my seat. There's something else sitting in my position. There's something else that's getting my first attention. And God is saying, it's time to remove some fake gods. It is time to remove some idols and turn your attention back to me. I want to preach this for our remaining time today, family. Can I ask you a question that God spoke to me? He said, Anthony, where's your passion? Where's your passion? Where's your passion? If you're taking notes, I want you to write that down. Father God, anoint your word today. Open our hearts. May we hear and do and never be the same. We declare even right now, Heavenly Father, in advance, thank you for feeding us. Relight our passion towards you today. Birth in us a new fire, a new desire to love you at greater heights, to go deeper with you. That is a, there's a new fire inside of us and we're ready to give birth. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen.
Amen, amen. You can go ahead and have your seats. Family, I want to go ahead and dismiss our C Kids students. Can we put our hands together for all of our C Kids? Middle and high school, come on. Family, there's something about passion. See, see, I, I'm very passionate about the things that I love in life. Anybody passionate in here? Come on, where, where are my passionate folks at? I'm very passionate about the things that I love. It's one of the things that I teach my kids is to be passionate about the very things that they love. See, I, I love the fact that even with my two oldest boys, they play sports. And I'm trying to teach them. There, there, there's some days that they're supposed to go to practice. And they would say, Dad, I don't want to go to practice. I don't feel like practicing right now. And I say to them that if you're passionate, son, your passion will get you to practice. Come on, somebody. You, you won't take a day off because you're, you're passionate about it. And I begin to, I begin to take them to, to glory days. Come on, come on, while my dad's in, I begin to tell them about back in the 1900s when I played ball. Sir, I have that dad moment, son, back in the day when I played ball. And I, I share my story with them because I want them to know that, that I have passion, that my passion pulled me to a place. I share the stories with them that, hey, come on, if you love doing this, you will, you will have passion about it because passion did not allow me to miss my place of where I'm supposed to be. Passion got me there. See, I have passion. Anybody, I say it again, do you have some passion? Because passion, even if you don't have a lot to do a lot, to accomplish the task at hand, passion will help you get there. If you can just have some passion, don't allow the enemy to take your passion away. I remember Pastor Brenda, come on, when, when I first got saved, come on, I, I didn't have no ministry. I did, well, I wasn't even a minister there. I would be late at night, come on, Pastor, I'm taking us back. I remember writing sermons and I wasn't even elected to be a minister. Yeah, I'm, I'm just sitting there writing. Who's going to let me preach in here? Can you? Come on. I'm just writing sermons. Even before I had a staff, Pastor Elaine, Pastor Brennan, I tell you, I'm writing leadership material. I don't got no staff. No one hired me. I'm not even in ministry. I'm just late at night just writing stuff. And now the stuff that I'm sharing with you guys 10, 15 years later, the stuff that was put in practice, I'm dropping. God is dropping through me. Stuff that's, oh, this is fresh. You don't even no, that happened 10, 15 years ago. I got journals because why? I was practicing passion. Passion will cause you to practice what you love. Passion will cause you to keep going after the very thing that God has called you to do, even though you don't feel like it. Passion will cause you to keep, don't give up, keep working. Passion will, will, will keep you moving. But where I'm coming to understand in my life that the enemy, that there are seasons in my life where the enemy will love to take your passion. Passion for the things you love. Passion for the things you desire. Passion that the enemy will love to drain you from of everything that God has connected you to. He would throw storms in your life and he would try to trip you up with different things. And, and where I come to find out that when you begin to get drained from your passion, you will turn down the highway of isolation. So now you're on a road all by yourself. You're wondering. Am I called to this? You're wondering, and should I keep going? And you're wondering, and now you're on this isolation path, and you're wrestling with your own thoughts, and you're questioning the things of God because now you don't have the passion to go after the thing that God has called you to do. You don't have the passion to keep writing that story that God has called you to do. You don't have the passion to create that vision plan that God has called you to do, that, that business that God has called you to walk, walk out on faith with. You don't have the passion. So now you're wrestling with your own thoughts by your own self and you're doubting of everything that God has called you to do. And I'm telling you, the enemy would love for you to go down that road called isolation because he wants to drain your passion. He wants to drain you from the very thing that God has called you to do it. And this is why I said it earlier. You have got to keep practicing with your passion. You got to keep singing that song that God has put in your spirit. You got to keep praying that prayer that God has given you back when you fell in love with him. 
You got to keep connecting with the right people that God has called you to connect with so that when your cold goes dry and your cold goes soft, God can connect you to some hot coals to stay on fire for the very thing that he's called you to do because God knows if the devil tries to get you isolated, you'll, you'll grow cold. You'll go cold, cold. You'll begin to question with doubt. Here's the, here's the thing about doubt, family. Here's the thing about doubt. Doubt will, will, easily, will easily come inside of you when you want to question the very things of God. Doubt will, will, definitely, begin to, doubt will beget, definitely begin to grow inside of you and question, should I keep going? Should, should I keep moving towards the very thing that God has called me to do? Should I keep doing the very thing that God has called me to do? But here's what I want to say, family. Here's what I want to say. Keep leaning in. Watch this. In Galatians 6 and 9, it says this. And let us not grow weary of doing good. Somebody say, for in due season, in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Here's what this season of your life is creating. I want to speak to that fire that's brewing down and deep down inside of you. That, that this fire, come on somebody, this fire is life changing. That, that this fire that God has put inside of you is getting ready to save some marriages. Come on somebody. That, that this fire is getting ready to, to create a business. That this fire that God has called you to do, that is moving, that is touching people, that lives is getting ready to get changed. You got to understand that what God will send you through, that your story is not in vain, that God is ordering your steps and is creating a fire that's getting ready to touch somebody. It's creating Creating a fire that's unquenchable, that is creating a fire that when you open your mouth, people are going to be running after Jesus. It's creating a fire inside of you. And when the enemy wants to throw his best blow, it's because you are a threat to what, he's, what God is getting ready to do in your life. The enemy knows that you're closer than you have ever been before. That the enemy knows that you are getting ready to step into something. That God wants to share this word with you today. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God is saying that you are stepping into a season that God is getting ready to give you double for your trouble. I'm telling your family, if you would just hang in there and you would begin to release that fire that God has placed inside of you, that you're getting ready to give birth to something greater, that that pain is getting ready to give birth to your destiny, that that, that promise that God has placed inside of you that is stirring up right now. Don't give up. Tap, tap your neighbor right now and say, don't give up. Come on, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep praying. Keep singing. Don't give up because this fire is shot up inside of you. So I just want to tell you, keep singing it if you're in a dark place right now. Keep singing. When you wake up in the morning, hear my hearts. Keep singing. Keep singing. Don't, don't, don't allow the enemy to drain you from the song that God has placed in your heart. Don't, 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 don't allow your reality to, to, to drain you from what God has placed inside of you. That I really believe this with all my heart that, that it says right here in James 1 and 8 that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That, that, that we have got to make sure that we're not walking in doubt. That if we're doubt, that, that, that will begin to take our mindset in another direction. But when our mindset gets fixed on Jesus, when our mindset gets fixed on him, he said that he would give us perfect peace. And is there anybody in here? Here's what we're praying today. Maybe you're walking in a season of doubt. Maybe you're walking in a season of questioning, should I keep going? Maybe you're walking in in a season, and here's what I'm saying. I, I know somebody who deals with doubt. My, matter of fact, we know about doubting Thomas, right? And Doubting Thomas, who has a nickname, they gave the man of God a nickname, Doubting Thomas. That he doubted that Jesus resurrected. 
that he doubted that Jesus would still be with him, that, that he doubted that even though there was separation, he was going through a season of grief because what used to be with him is no longer with him. Is anybody in here who went through a season of grieving, you had some loss in your life and now you're doubting, should I keep going? And doubting Thomas was in a season all by himself when he's supposed to have been with the crowd, but if he would have stayed with the crowd, he would have saw the evidence that Jesus never left him that Jesus right beside him, that Jesus is walking right there with him. And here's what I want to take you at, family. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, go to John chapter 20, verses 24. Watch this, family. It says, now Thomas, one of the 12 called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord but he has said to them, unless I see in his hand the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. If you go up a couple of verses, here's what I love about this story. Because actually Jesus appeared to the disciples a couple of verses up. That, that, that they were supposed to be in a, in a spot all together and, and, and that, um, Thomas wasn't in the correct spot. That if Thomas would have been with the others, he would have saw that Jesus was with him. He would have saw that. So it, it lets me know, family, as I'm, as I'm reading even more this week is, am I missing my correct spot in this season? Where's my spot where Jesus wants me to be? Where's my position that where Jesus wants me to be? Because if Thomas was in the correct spot, Thomas would have got the passion that he needed to keep going. See, sometimes we're missing our spot with God. Sometimes we're, we're missing being in the right position that we're, we're focused on other stuff and we're, we're focusing on, on this and being a mom and we're focusing on wearing this hat as a dad or as a leader that we could get so focused, but as we're focused on making sure we're spending time with him. So when we spend time with him, the fire that's inside of us will catch on fire. And that's what God is saying. If you catch my fire, I'll make you a better father. If you catch my fire, fire, I'll make you a better mom if you would just catch my fire because you're trying to give fire to things and that fire will go out but if you would just spend time with him, I see you working, I see you tolling, I see you doing this, I see you making decisions, I see you handing in there and you're running over here touching this and you're running over there touching this but God is saying if you would just rest in my presence. I'll give you a fire to touch all of those things. I'll, I'll give you a fire to complete all of the assignments. I'll, I'll give you a fire, and that fire is a passion that can only come from him. See, sometimes we can create strange fires in our life. And when that fire runs out, we find ourselves depleted. And when that fire is no longer there, we begin to question, should we keep going? But I believe this for all my heart that God has given you a fire in this season that's unquenchable. That God has given you a desire in this season to run after him like you have never ran after him before because God so loved you. He's madly in love with you and he's giving you a fire that I'm telling you that you are going out to get ready to do some greatness. There's greatness inside of you. There's beauty inside of you. And God is saying, if you belong to me, come on, my daughter. If you belong to me, my brother, my, my son. And God is saying, I'm placing what I place inside of you belongs to me. What, what I place inside of you will come to pass. What I place place inside you will, the promise will come to pass. And God is saying, if my hand is on you, I'll light a fire to it and I'll watch you say it come to pass. There's a fire not to give up in here, family. That God will touch you. That God will touch you. And here's what we're decreeing today. It's time to get your passion back. It's time to get your passion back. It's time to get your your passion back, and God is, is answering the questions, and, and here's what I believe. Here, here's what he shared with me, Pastor Brent. Here, here's what he shared with me. He said that, that God said that he would, he would send midwives to give birth to where you're getting ready to, go, getting ready to walk into. That, that, that God would send some, some midwives, and my, my first point is this, family. My pain is a midwife to my passion. 
That, 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 that this pain that I have, that, that the enemy thought that he was sending some pain my way to destroy me, that the, that the enemy thought that he was sending some pain my way to, de- to defeat me, but actually God would turn your pain into power. And I'm telling you this, even though it doesn't make any sense, I don't understand it, but I read it in his gospel that God will actually take that pain to give birth to the promise that he's getting ready to put inside of you because God will use it to push out of what he he has put inside of you. God will use pain to, so that you can give birth to what he has placed inside of you. See, now you look at that pain different. See, see now your, your per- perspective changes that you begin to question with doubt that this pain that I'm going through is it because of shame, that this pain that I'm going through is it because, because I, I made a mistake, is, is this pain that, I, that I'm going through is because I didn't make the right decision back then, this pain that, that I'm going through. And all I'm telling you right now, if you stay in a place with God, he will turn that pain into power and it will give birth to the very passion that he's placed inside of you. Allow your pain to move in the right direction. That's it. Come on. Allow your pain to move in the right direction. If you would give your pain to God, watch he do something for you. You would give your pain to the right one. Don't give your pain to people. Come on. Don't give your pain to a job. Come on. Don't give your pain to your family. No, no, no. Don't give your pain to other things. We've been out here just giving pain to people. And God is saying, bring your pain to me and I'll bring a midwife in your life. And that very promise that I have placed inside of you will give birth to the very thing that I call you to do. Give your pain to God. Give your pain to God. We cannot cannot allow ourselves to talk to people more about our pain than we talk to God about our pain. That 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 we will give other people our full attention when God is waiting for us to give our ears to him, to give our mouth to him. That God is saying, am I your first love? Do you, do you come to me when you can't sleep at night? Or do you call other people? Do you, do you come to me first? And we will preach about community. And we will preach about accountability. But I will always preach this to you. That you have got to make sure your first default is always to run to your heavenly father. That your heavenly father is the source to your passion that your heavenly father is a source to this fire. There is no other fire out here that people can give you strange fires and you can feel good for a season and people can give good advice and you'll feel good for a season. And you can go to conference and you can go to seminars and you can go to networking and all of that's great, but it's nothing like the voice that comes from your father because breakthrough will come, the anointing will come, the miracle will come, the testimony will come. When that fire gets lit by him, the Holy Spirit will move in the right direction, and I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but he's lighting your fire right now. A networking event can't pay for this. That moment with that high-class successful leader can't pay for a moment that's better than with God. That God will have you sitting in rooms that you don't believe. That God will have you sitting in rooms that you don't, that, that, that you know that you don't supposed to be there. One day, I don't like talking about myself, one day I'll share stories. I know there's rooms that God is sitting me in right now that I don't belong to be there, Pastor Elaine. I can share some testimonies of even with our offices that I'll share with you later. Having, having meetings, and I know I don't belong there, but God will take a pain. Come on, somebody. God, hey, you're trusting me with your pain. Come on, you're trusting me and I, when you were by yourself. You, you trusted me when everybody left. You, you trusted me when, when you was crying late at night. You, you trusted me and you kept walking with me and you kept talking to me and you kept trusting me. So now I can trust you with this. Come on. Because you trusted me with nothing, I can trust you with this because you're trusting me with little. I I can trust you with this and all I'm telling you, there's a midwife coming your way right now. Yeah, your midwife is on the way right now and that midwife has a name, it's called pain. That midwife has a name and it calls pain. It, It says this in Romans 5 verses three, it says not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, come on. Knowing that suffering produces endurance and and endurance produces character 
And character produces hope and, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been giving to us. And all I'm saying that this pain is producing a fire in you. There's a fresh fire in you right now. There's something producing. Your endurance is producing even though you think you're, you're losing. That your hope is in, increasing even though you're struggling right now. I love that Romans is teaching us right here that what you're going through is actually giving light to your future. That you may be in the midst of a dark place right now on a dark road all by yourself. And God would take that road and lead him right back to the light and what he's getting ready to do. It's producing something. It's producing a passion. It's producing a fire inside of you. It reminds me of Jesus and, and, and a God of Gethsemane. That when Jesus said these words, Lord, take this cup away from me. Not, not my will, come on. Not, not, not my will, not not, not my decision, not, not, not my preference, but, but I, I, did, I wasn't planning to, to, to go through this, but not, not don't, I don't want to go through that, God, but your will, your, 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 your plan, your, your purpose, your, your, your decision. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And see, we can be drinking from the wrong cup in this season, and God has called us to drink from another cup. And Jesus by himself and the God in the Gethsemane, he drank from the right cup. And that's all I'm saying. Sometimes you got to learn how to drink from a cup that you don't want to drink from. But if you drink from the right cup, it'll, it'll produce some hope. If you drink from the right cup, it, it, it'll produce some endurance. If you drink from the right cup, you, I'm telling you, it's some strength in that cup. Come on, somebody there. There's some wisdom in that cup. Come on. There's, there's a miracle in that cup. I love that he would take the pain and turn it into purpose. And that's my, my point number two as I get ready to that close out, I want to invite the team back up. Not only family, not only will he take my pain and use it as a midwife, but he also, he takes my purpose. My purpose is a midwife to my passion. See, see, it, 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 will, it will very confuse us if our story just had all pain. See, pain is not the only midwife to, to your passion, but he has given us purpose that, that is a midwife to our passion. And you have to remind yourself that God has placed purpose inside of each and every one of us. That God ha has placed something inside, even though you may not see it right now, and even though you may walk in some doubt right now, and even though you might question it, and, and the reality is that it's not happening right now. Understand this, there's purpose inside of each and every one of us. That God has placed some purpose, and, and watch this in 1 Peter 2 and 9, we, we notice it, but you are a chosen race. A, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, a, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. My purpose is a reminder to me about my identity. My purpose reminds me that I'm called. My, my purpose reminds me that God has called me out of a dark place. My my purpose, see, see, remind, you have to be reminded of your purpose when you walk in a season of doubt. You have got to remind that God has called me to be an incredible husband. That, that God has called me to be an incredible husband. That, that, that God has, has called me and, and, and when failures come up, come on somebody, when, when shame comes up and, and, and past mistakes come up and, and failures come up, I, I want to be truthful in here because you can wrestle with shame, but understand if your God loves you so much and he'll remind you that you're still called, that he called you to this, that he called you out of a place and set you into his marvelous light. Be reminded today and that gives birth to a passion. That gives birth on a Wednesday when you feel like quitting after a meeting and you say, you know what, God, I'm called to this. On a Friday when, when you and your spouse just had an argument, come on somebody, and I don't know if we're going to make it. I'm called to be a husband. 
I'm called to be a great wife. Come on, somebody. That I'm called to be a great leader. You, you got when the struggle hits you, you have to be reminded of your identity. And if your identity doesn't match what God, if your identity doesn't match what's going on in life, I have to take myself back to first Peter and say, you know what? I'm royal. Come on, somebody. Then, I, then I'm, I'm part of this priesthood. Come on. Then, then I know I'm going struggling. Finance is not where it needs to be at. But you know what? I'm cold. Uh, you know what? I, I got some shame right now, but I'm cold. You know what? I, I'm, I'm having an identity struggle right now, but you know what? I'm called. You're called, family. You're called to the very thing that God has placed inside of you. That's the beautiful thing. As we get ready to close out, we can stand to our feet. I want to close out with John 20. And hopefully all of this is making sense. Just not a, a lot of yelling. <laughs> but I believe it with all, my, with all my heart that God has given us fresh power in this season. Because I, as a pastor, in my heart, I can, I can feel the weight of the burden that you can be walking through. We can feel the struggle we can, we can feel the, the temptation. We can hear the whispers of the enemy. And, and, and what I love in here, that, matter of fact, they'll put it on the screen. Watch this in John 20. Watch this, 26. It says this, it says eight days later, and this is Thomas. Remember doubting Thomas, right? You can doubt sometimes, right? You can question sometimes, right? And, we, and what, I, what I said earlier, that Thomas wasn't in the right place, so he doubted. But eight days later, Thomas found himself in the right place. And watch what happens as eight days later, his disciples were inside again. Again. His disciples were inside again. And, and, and Thomas was what? With them. Before Thomas wasn't with them, but now Thomas is with them. But I love this, it says, although the doors were locked, Mm. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Even on the other side of a locked door, Jesus can still get to you. Mm. You, 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 you locked away that story. You locked away that, that failure. You, you locked away that shame, on the other side of the door, you, you locked the door away, you threw away the key. Nobody is getting inside here. I'ma just sit here by myself with my thoughts. I'll just drain myself out. I just wonder who's on the other side of a locked door right now. I just wonder what, what's on the other side of your locked door. And that it says that, it says that he said to Thomas, put your fingers here. Thomas lost his passion, but the passionate one showed up for him. That Thomas questioned, should I still believe that? Thomas questioned, he had doubt about Jesus and Jesus came to see about him. It, it lets me know that when I, when I go in a season of struggle, Jesus will still come meet me right where I am. Right in the midst of shame, Jesus will meet you. Right in the midst of question, Jesus will meet you. That right in the midst of, of getting ready to give up, he will, he will break through that door. He will slide through that door. I know you threw away the key. And Jesus said, I'm coming after you because you belong to me and I call you to do great things. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Right where you are. Come on, somebody. I'm coming after you. I know you feel like giving up. I know that door is locked, but I'm coming after you. Because you belong to him. You belong to him. I wrote in my notes, notes the door of shame. This is what God has been whispering all week to me about. Maybe the door of rejection. 
the door of insecurity, the door of heartbreak, the door of failure. But the passionate one always has the key to your heart. There's no locked door that can keep Jesus away from you. There, there's nothing that can separate you from his love. That when his word says that he didn't come to, to bring condemnation, but his word said that he came to give you love. And in other words, I can say it this way, that, that he came to give you fire, that he came to give you passion, that he came to give you a desire, that he's coming to give you the very thing that you need to keep going. And that thing is called love. That thing is called passion. And when Jesus comes, he doesn't come empty handed. He comes with the very thing that you need to keep going. On the other side of a locked door. So, Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. As we seal this moment, even right now, we're praying for the ones that's on the other side of a locked door. That, 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 that locked door of struggle, that locked door of frustration. That, that locked door of, of disappointment, that, that Jesus, that, that the sin of your presence, Holy Spirit, begin to, begin to move and get beyond the heart and get beyond the toil you and get behind the heart and heart and, and get where you need to go, Holy Spirit. We're, we're praying that the ground and the soil you is being available right now for you to plant new seeds and, and new thoughts and, and new things, you know, God, that you will remove the old so that the new will come and we just ask for that you do a new thing. Your servant David said, create in me a clean heart. Create in me, God, a pure heart. Come on, create in me, God, a new heart. Cre create in me, God, some new ways. Create in me. And the only way to create a new thing, you got to go back to your first love. You got to go back to your first love. We come back to you. We come back to you. We believe this in Jesus' name. We don't want to leave this moment of praying for salvation. That as we're speaking about this moment with Jesus, that the greatest decision that you can ever make is giving your life to, to Christ. That the, that the real passion only comes from him, that the, that the real desire can only come from him, that the real love can only come from him. So maybe you're in here right now and you, you've been behind that locked door for a while. I believe that inviting Jesus into that space, he wants to touch you right there. Maybe you have never given your life to Christ, or maybe God is saying, hey, it's time to rededicate. For our online family, for in person, I want you to repeat this after me. To say, Jesus, I love you. I am a sinner. I repent. I confess. I believe that you are my Lord and Savior. Live in me. Breathe in me. Change my ways. Change my heart transform me into your image. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Come on, shout amen. Glory be unto you, Lord God. Glory be unto you, Lord God. God, I thank you that there's no jail that, that shame could put me in. There's no bondage that past lies can put me in. That you can't find me and break the bars off. There's no liar's den that you can't come in and tell bricks off for me, Lord God. There's no well mouth that can swallow me up and to take me home, Lord God, that you won't come and find me. There's no dark hole, Lord God, that my mental thoughts can put me in, Lord God, that you won't come deep down in and say, get yourself up out of there. Get up. Do you know who called you? Do you know who you are? Get up from there. No past mistakes that could keep replaying in the back of my head. Silence it. Silence the things that hinder us. 
from being the best that you've called us to be. Silence the darkness, Lord God. Silence the shame. Silence the guilt, Lord God. And help us to walk into complete healing so we can walk into our complete identity. There's no mountain, no darkness, no wickedness that you haven't already combated, that you haven't already done battle with and so victory over. Help us to remember that you are victorious and that death itself could not hold you back. So what is this mountain? What is anxiety? What is depression? That if we sit at the feet of God, that you won't get up off of us. What is a burden that you can't break? What is a curse that you can't break? We cast all our cares unto you. You are Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end of all things. You trampled over death. You got up on the cross and you still forgave the man to the right of you. <laughs> I thank you that you are a loving savior and we can't fail in your grace. No matter how much the enemy want us to think that we are failing, we are victorious. In Jesus name I pray, amen. Amen, 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 amen. I thank God for the word today. I thank God for Pastor Anthony. May God restore his strength. What a mighty word that he poured out today. I'm super thankful for that. Now is the time in the service for the offering and the returning of our tithes. The ushers are coming forward. And I'm gonna pray over the tithes and the offering before we give our offering and tithes. God, I thank you, Lord God, for the seed that you have given us, Father. I thank you, Father, for the good grounds, Lord, that we are able to sow into. I thank you for the community here. I thank you, Lord God, for the marvelous opportunities that we have to be blessings to families, Lord God, to partnerships, Lord. I thank you, Father, that we're able to, to serve in Maryland, Virginia, D.C., and other nations. Like, God, I thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in us and through us, Father. I pray that you accept our offering, Father. I pray that you accept our tithe, Lord God, and that you find it pleasing, Lord. I pray that you will bless it, Lord God, and triple it double fold, Lord God. I pray that you bless the homes in this place, Lord God, connected to this church, Father. Father, I pray, Lord God, that their wills will overflow, Father, so that we can be blessings to others, Lord. I thank you for giving us a giving heart, Father. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. What an opportunity we had last Sunday when the partners came and we were able to see the partners that we partnership with, like the shelter. Like that was an amazing opportunity that we had to see where Celebration DC sows seeds in the community. Yeah, it's amazing to be a part of a community that gives back to the community. Amen. Yeah. Yes. And so at this time, I am excited to bring announcements. For those of you that don't know, my name is Casey Sharperson. And I moved to Alexandria just over a year ago, and I had two goals. One was to find a church, and two was to find community. And Celebration Church DC is a place where I found both of those. So one, if you are looking for community and you are a woman and you are available on November 5th, we have Sisterhood. Sisterhood. <laughs> we have Sisterhood, and we are so excited about Sisterhood. Pastor Brenda, you are a speaker at Sisterhood, so yes. we can cheers for that. We're excited. <laughs> um, so if somebody is new to the concept of Sisterhood, what can they expect? Sure. So it's an opportunity for us to come together and glean from one another. Um, we will be talking about the tale of two gardens. Two Sounds gardens. very intriguing, very interesting. Sounds like something you should be in the room for. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. You might find a best friend there. You might find a best friend. Um, so we're really excited about Sisterhood. And then for those that um, are 
interested to come, it's at three. You can sign up. I already see people scanning the QR codes. So you could also do that on the website. Um, the other thing that I wanted to note, especially if you are not available or you are not a woman and you're like, well, how do I also get community? We have groups. So groups are so powerful and it's a great way to get together and to get in community, go deeper in the word, go deeper in relationship. And so you can get plugged in on the website for those as well. Yes. Anything else you want to add? That's all. Okay. So with that, let us pray. It's time for the benediction. Lord, thank you for the opportunity for us to come together and worship you. Lord, we thank you that we are in a location where we're able to bring forth not only um, our prayers, but our giving, our tithes, our everything. We can bring our being and we can do that freely here with no persecution. So Lord, we are grateful for that. We're thankful. Lord, I pray for those that are in the middle of a season where they are in need of a midwife where they have pain right now. Lord, I pray that you just bring them comfort, Lord, and that you are with them as they press through and as they endure and as they push into their purpose. And Lord, for those that are in the midst of a season where they are nervous about moving into their purpose, Lord, I pray that you just give them uh, the confidence, that midwife of confidence to give them exactly what they need, the tools to move forward in faith. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray for protection of everyone here. And we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a beautiful week and thank you for joining us.